Good to go. Okay, this is the Shepherd from WeLoveMetal.com. We're here in uh, Madison, Wisconsin. Nancy Morton, we're here with Corey and Zane. What's hey, up, guys? We love metal! I got my merch. <laughs> Nice. Uh, well, so wanted, yeah, I wanted to get the album cover. Let's start there real quick. Love the album cover. Obviously, you guys are very proud of where you're from. Yeah. You know, and, and I want to talk about first. Why? Why the, the name New Southern? Is there, what's behind that? Uh, that came honestly. The whole record. That's what was crazy for this for, for us. This first record, because you know we're, we're really good at writing the music and getting everything ready on that end. But like, we just kind of it rushed up on us with the artwork and the name of the whole thing and the concept. And like when we were out in the studio with Bob and uh, the last session we did out there, we wrote New Southern. It was a song, it was a newer song. And uh, I don't even remember how, or, like it was Reno's idea, he came up with the name. But it wasn't going to be the album title. It was almost like, it was we just, live just this way. Yeah. Kind of way. New Southern, it's a new, turning a new leaf on New life type deal. But, but that was the name of the song at that time. And then like after we come home for a few months, we're talking about the record. Uh, like we all just kind of like, man, naming it New Southern. And artwork with it and do this and that you know so that's what we went with but it was really a song title first but like he said that's what we're going for is kind of the new southern not live this way and like you know it's the mentality like the mindset it's not just how we do the music it's just like opening doors for people being nice to you human beings that you lived on the earth with you know what i mean like it's it goes deeper than the song it's more just how you should live life but, you know that's why we give credit to the south because everybody there so nice, so cool, so you know, loving and helping, you know what I mean? Like they're not they're not just driving hundred miles a day, you know what I mean? Like there's still grocery stores that you can go shopping and they'll take your groceries to your car for you. For the elderly and stuff, it's like dude, you don't see that anywhere. No, no. But but yeah, for sure that's the southern that When you guys come up with your set list, did you guys have you played everything on the album and just seen what was gelling and went from there or did you have a preconceived we got, we're going to play this, this, and this for This sure. really depends on what kind of band we're touring with, really. Yeah. We have a, kind of a more groovy set, and then we kind of had a really, we went on uh, tour with the Sheet Head, and we had a really, really heavy set. So. Yeah, that's like he said, that's what we judged. The whole record, uh, you know, we're pretty proud of it, we, and that's one thing that, you know, I take pride in is when people tell me, they're like, man, you said that's a record that you can start and go to the end, oh, and every track's great. And that's, and you know, but like he said, there is songs like, there's really rock radio songs like Black Heartbeat, like if we ever went out with Shine Down or like Seether or Blackstone Cherry, that would be in our set. But when we go out with Machine Head, we're not gonna play that song. We're gonna play like, I Get Along With The Devil, Hate Automatic, Hate Automatic, yeah. you know, heavier stuff. So yeah, like he said, it doesn't really, it's not, oh, the crowd likes this one more, oh, we like to play this one more. It's more like, dude, this song will fit the crowd that we're playing. So, you know, we gotta look at it like that, so. So you gotta tell the fans, cause this story is so cool about the barn and parents are away and you guys are just jamming in the barn. And is that how it was all born? Just basically, this time? guy's house. Yeah. I mean, literally, like it all popped off because I had a guitar. Me and this dude grew up together since grade school. And that's me and him go furthest back as far as like, if you go before the band, me and him grew up together in the same uh, elementary school. And then Nevada Rado and the original drummer all grew up in Rush Ring, which is like 25 miles south. Well, when we got into high school, I had a guitar. It wasn't that great, but Nevada had a guitar. We met like that and then just started jamming. And, you know, once we realized that there was, yeah, we didn't know what we were going to do. We were like, man, we know it's fun to jam together with these three or four dudes, five or whatever at the time. You know, I think it was just four. We didn't have to do that in high days. Anyways, well, we kept going, kept going. But, yeah, out of my place, my parents had that shop that, like, we never did anything in. So, like, you know, we're out in the country. We jam at four in the morning. We were just every, and it was cool because we thought back. There was no ever, ever, ever us partying. Like, if we did party, it was us in the house with just a few friends. Like, we would never go to the high school parties out in the scene. Like, we would just, like, literally from Friday to Sunday be at my house jamming. You know what I mean? Like, riding the tunes. Not gonna lie, we skipped middle school to jam, too. So. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. We did. Yeah. We did. Yeah. 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 Song. Well, hey, this is uh, Vanna. Yeah, this is Vanna. Oh, we are? What's up? My bad, I'm sorry. This is ILoveMetal.com. ILoveMetal.com, that's true. I do too. Maybe just one last uh, question since you guys got to rush and thank you for the time. I, and I say this with all due respect, I, I'm sure you guys will take it this way. For a lot of fans, it seemed like when Pantera disbanded, that there was a hole in metal. And although you guys are doing it your own way, I know from being a lot of people that I listen to music with, you guys are filling the void right now in metal. Man, I'm saying yeah, a lot, man. We really appreciate that. We, 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 when that's like awesome. From our point of view, like I wouldn't say that we're just trying to take up where Pantera left off because there's, there's several bands that aren't around doing what they used to be doing, you know what I mean? Or the ones that are still a band, they don't sound like they used to, you know what I mean? 
So like, you know, that, like Pantera is a huge one for me, but I mean, you know, for the other guys, not so much. You know, they love Pantera, but they're more into, you know, audio slave, like just fucking like that, that, like that, that like classic. But I will say, I, I personally can say though, that like, the, like, the, the, like, dude, when the you were, in the energy of the Pantera. Oh, when, 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 when you were younger, you were more into Pantera. Yeah, than I will say I've got to come around now to like 30 years younger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, dude, Pantera is definitely one of our, still, yeah, they're legends. They're one of those, they live like three out, they live, you know, where they're at, it's like two and a half hours away, so it's real close to home. Huge influence, you know, but yeah, we're definitely trying to bring back the live concert. Like, like it's, we're in a day and age of CDs and singles, and that's cool, that's great. You need radio play, but dude, come to the show. Yeah. Like, get off of this thing, stop like, staring at it. Me and Nevada are talking about how there's 4,000 people here at this festival, and there's like a hundred up in front of the stage. Yeah. Everybody else has a photo pig, their cell phone, and yeah. they're like, well, living the American dream. Yeah. I think that's our cure. That's the end of our. Thank you guys so much.